1913, five ounces of gold would cost you $100. So $100 bill would buy you five ounces of gold. Today, five ounces of gold is valued at $9,750. Why do I say this? Well, if you have a $100 bill today, and you had a $100 bill in 1913, that's a big difference. Where did all that purchasing power go? Where did all that value go? Where did all that you know, money, if you want to call it, where did all it go? It got devalued. It got stolen. It got taken from you and I and most everyone else. And it was given to those in charge. So I'll start with that point. When I learned a bill, 1913 can buy you five ounces of gold. Today, five ounces of gold is valued at $9,750. So why am I saying this? I'm saying this because paper, uh, one angle of that is paper has no value. That The money that you have or know, the currency, the dollars you and I use or are forced to use, um, whether that is by a $100 bill, $5 bill, $1 bill, 20 whatever the case may be, or the quarters, nickels, dimes, pennies, or the digits in your bank account. They're all fiat currency. They're all used by force of the government. The government says you have to use this, these things for exchange, to do commerce, to pay your employees, to get your wages. It's all in this. It's all, that's the way it's been since they initiated the Federal Reserve in 1913. And since 1913, the, the dollar has been valued tremendously. So I want to just, a, a couple examples of that and just go over a few other things of where they're headed. They're making us head um, with the, uh, the currency. And uh, so if you think about it, paper has no value, really. I mean, what is the value of paper? Well, the value of paper is maybe you want to write on it, you can take some notes, but if it's covered complete with ink, on both sides, like your dollar bills are, there's no room to do any messaging, really. So there goes that of any kind of value, no matter how small it is, that, that's gone. So the only thing left, really, is um, maybe some sort of kindling to start a fire. And that's what's been used in uh, Venezuela, Zimbabwe, uh, Argentina. Once their fiat currency loses the value and hyperinflates and it's gone, it's worthless, it's blown around the streets, they are using it for um, paper in the walls, for wallpaper, they are uh, using it for fires. The homeless are using it to, to kindle to start their fires, that kind of stuff. So that's what it is. What once had value, no longer does. So there's no difference between the $100 bill that you have and the $1 bill that you have. It's the same paper, ink, basically the same. The only difference is, is the coverage of it. What are the pictures? What are the numbers on it? That's it. It's the same thing. So in 1964, that was the last year that they had any sort of value in the, the coinage, the coins that you and I use. And that was when they, that was the last year they had silver in the coinage. They had 90% silver in most of the coins, your quarters, your dimes, and then your 50 cent pieces, that kind of stuff. And then they took it out. So 1965 and newer than that year has just your, the junkiest of your junk metals that really have no value, for the most part, in them. I mean, that's, that's what they put in there. So if you think about it, the minimum wage back in 1964 was $1.25 an hour. Well, that equated to five quarters, five 1964 quarters or older. So it's 1964. The melt value today, those five quarters, if you had any 64 or older quarters, just the melt value of the silver content in there, and there's the 90% silver, um, is $24.25. So $24.25 an hour, because you were getting five quarters an hour. Today, those, today, if you get new quarters, it's worth, they're worthless. I mean, they have really no value to them, really. Um, but if you had 64 quarters in 1964 or older, you had value. You had what it was worth. So you were working 
a job, making a wage, so you got paid in something that had value, retained value. Now, you go to work, you have a wage, and you're either paid in a check and you go cash it, so the check is you know, you know, your fiat you know, currency, your fiat digits are in your bank account or on the check, and once you cash it, if you get cash for it, you are no better off today, really. Because uh, the paper has no money. The fiat paper you get back, the dollar bills, the hundreds, uh, the 20s, the 50s, whatever you get back, that has no value to it. If you go get quarters, dimes, nickels, pennies, they have no value to them really. So everything you've worked for, you get paid back in something that has no value, really. It has no value. The only reason it has a value is because the government says, hey, this is what you guys are going to use for commerce. This is what you need to use. So then I view a $100 bill the same as my neighbor, the same as his neighbor. And we view it as because, well, we get this paper, this thing, or these digits, and we can buy something with it. We can buy food with it that we need. Food has value. We can buy gas with it that we need. Gas has value. We can buy a house with it if we need. A house has value. We can buy a car. Car has value. So we can buy stuff with value from the stuff that has no value really. It's, it's, a, it's a fiat. It has value because we're forced to use it and we can't use anything else. I know uh, the government, you can't, if you're an employer, you can't pay your employees in silver or gold. It's illegal. Why is that? You were doing it 1964 and before, I mean, because that's what the coinage was. It was, you know, 90% silver. It had value to it. Um, and the law was passed, and they changed that. And you cannot exchange goods or services for uh, silver or gold to something of value. So you do put a hard day's work in, and then you would get something of value back if you were able to do that, but you are not. So um, I'm just trying to say... What's happening, what, what they're pushing is this digital dollar, which I spoke about uh, last video, the video before, and that is going to happen. There's no way to stop it, really, um, unless there's a miracle and, you know, a huge percent of it just get out and stop abiding by and, you know, doing whatever they want us to do to step in line. But it, it's not going to happen. It doesn't happen. So the digital dollar is coming. And it's, it's no different, really, than the, the thing we have now, you know, the program or, you know, the system we have now. It's not really any different, except the difference is, is paper is more valuable than digits on a computer. Period. Paper still has a value. The metals, no matter how junky they are, in the quarters and the nickels and the dimes, and the pennies that we use today still have a value over digits. Digits can be wiped with a snap of your fingers, with a push of a button. Digits are gone. It doesn't matter. They don't hold any value whatsoever. Um, so that's going to happen. And, and when that happens, I know the, we're at pretty much 0% interest nowadays. That's how it is with the, the bank exchanges and that kind of stuff. And they've been talking about negative interest rates. So that means if you hold $100 in the bank, you're going to get charged to have that in there because your interest rates will be negative. So you'll be losing money over time in your account. Um, I know other countries are already in negative with their interest rates. And there's been a lot of talk of that with us here in the United States. So what does a digital dollar do? Well, it makes that so much easier, so much simpler. Because all they have to do is, they have your account. This is you know, John Doe's account. This is what he's getting every week or every two weeks, whatever, for his job. And because uh, we're such a, a great service, the federal government and the Federal Reserve, that now, because we're holding all this stuff for you, because there is no more cash, there's nothing really that you hold that has value or any sort of substance to it. We are going to say, well, now it's a, a half a percent monthly that it's going to cost to have your funds available to you. 
even though that's what they're going to force on you and I and the businesses to use for commerce, still going to charge it for the inconvenience that they'll say, and it's going to be better for everyone. It's, it's just, it's for your safety, it's for your protection, it's going to be better for everybody. That's how it always goes. So I got a thing here I just wanted to list off, if you think about it. Fake money, a medium of exchange, it's a promise to pay, it's an IOU, saying, hey, you have this $100 bill, it's not worth anything, but if you spend it, I promise that you're going to be able to get something for it. I promise that it'll be accepted. Well, you know about promises as well as I do. That they're just around to be broken. Um, it's a wealth confiscation device. If you have money, whether it's digital, whether it's paper, whether it is how it is nowadays, it's a wealth confiscation. I mean, it's sort of like they had the um, thing they passed, the stimulus bill they passed uh, back in March, I believe it was, the $22 trillion or the $2.2 trillion, excuse me, that equated to be $8,000 for every man, woman, and child in the United States. And from that, few people qualify for $1,200. And then if they had kids, they may be qualified too. Everything else that was left, that went to, all to the banks, all to those who are deserving, quote-unquote, and all to the politicians and the ones that started this and they're pushing another stimulus bill, another stimulus package. And it's gonna be more of the same. It's just, I, I put it sort of like, if your child has $20,000 in the bank, he got money from his grandparents, whatever the case may be, he's 10 years old now. And you say, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna take some cash out of your account and we're gonna give you $100. We're gonna give you $100 if his name's John. Johnny, we're gonna give you, we're gonna, Pull some money out of your account, your $20,000 that's in there, for college, or whatever the case may be. We're going to give you $100 a week. We're going to do this for 10 weeks. You're going to get $100 a week for 10 weeks. But because of that, that we have to do this, what we're going to do is mommy and daddy are going to pull out $5,000. We're going to take $5,000. We're going to take it out. You're going to have $50,000 left, so don't worry about that. That's still plenty. You're going to get $100 you know, every week for 10 weeks, and that's that, and you'll be happy. Well, that doesn't, the math doesn't add up. Where did the rest of it go? Well, obviously, it went to mommy and daddy. But Johnny's happy, he's getting $100 a week for 10 weeks, because he's gonna spend that in, in whatever he wants, whether that be toys or, or whatever it is, you know, tells his heart's happy. That's the same thing they're doing to us. Just enough to keep people from rioting and, and revolting and smartening up and getting wise. It's like, oh, well, you guys are out of jobs. I mean, we got high unemployment. You guys need the help. So let me rip all this out of what you have to come and what your children and grandchildren, your, your children's grandchildren, um, everything they're going to have because we're stealing it from the future to pay for it now. And we're going to give you crumbs well, we take the big amounts right now from you because government has zero money. Zero. They never have any money. The only money they have is what they've stolen from someone else to give to themselves and those they deem fit. That's it. Period. So um, the paper money is easy to print. It's cheap. And digital is even cheaper and easier. All you have to do is press some buttons. Real money... Is that it's a medium of exchange, real money, gold, silver, some sort of asset that holds value. It's, uh, it holds value over time, like the, the gold thing I started with, the five ounces for $100 back in 1913 equates to you know, $9,750 today. It hold, held value. I mean, it, it holds value. That's what it does. Same with silver. Um, no one's liable for it. So if you hold the silver or the gold, no one else is liable for that. No one, you don't owe anybody anything. You can't, don't have to depend on anyone, anyone for that. Period. If your money's in the bank, you have to depend on the bank approving whatever it is you want to do. The bank approving you withdrawing. The bank approving a purchase that you do. The bank having
having it there when you want it. it depend on that. Um, it's uh, it's easy enough. Real money, gold and silver, is easy enough for everyone to understand. Different countries, that kind of stuff. It has a value. Everybody says this is what it is. No one can make this worth less than it is or more than it is. It is what it is. It's a standard, and that's what it should be. A standard. That's why we were on a gold standard in the early 1900s, and we were in some form until 1971 when Nixon took us off the gold standard. Any form of gold standard. It was a standard. Right now, we have a paper standard, which all that is, it's a standard of getting ripped off. It's a standard of government, you know, printing more and more, creating more and more. They are illegally doing it, in my opinion. If I was doing it, I'd be in jail. I'd be in prison for the rest of my life, probably. But they're doing it because they say this is what you do. You need the inflation. You need this. You need that. Well, you don't. You don't want it. They want it. Because that's how they get you know, money. That's how they get by. It's, it's something to think about. I just I had to get this out there and just the digital dollars coming. I just want to make people aware. Make sure you have stuff. Make sure you have assets. Not just stuff. Assets. Gold, silver, land. Um, like I had said last time, I just touched on cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin is the sixth largest currency in the world. That means people are valuing that, valuing that, and they're not being forced to, like you are with the dollar or whatever it may be from different countries. Those are all forced because that's what you're forced to use. So, as always, cover yourself, you know, make sure you have assets to get through whatever times there are. Thank you again for watching. Stay vigilant, protect your wealth, and protect your health.